Good day and welcome to our top 12 Windows 10 new features. Uh, these are things that uh, uh, have been in Windows perhaps for uh, a few versions now, but you're probably not familiar with them and they will make your life better. Uh, we're going to roll through this pretty quick, uh, so let's get to it. The very first one is clipboard history. So what that is, is when you uh, copy something into your clipboard and then you uh, try to paste, you would know that if you copy uh, a second thing, it will only remember the second thing. Well, that's no longer the case. You can easily go into, where well, you can click start and go into clipboard settings. And in clipboard settings, there is now something called clipboard history. So if you turn that on, let's just show what that does. So I'm going to go to a Word document that I've got built here. And uh, I'm going to uh, copy uh, the number 222, right click and copy. Then I'm going to take this plane, I'm going to right click and copy. Then I'm going to take, um, I'm going to write some more stuff here, and then I'm going to copy that. Now, uh, if you uh, were to do this normally, let's say you go into Excel, uh, you would only get uh, the last thing we copied, which are these, which is this text here. So let's just show you what that looks like. So if I just right click and, and paste, meh, there we go. Uh, I just get the last thing that uh, that I entered. However. Uh, because I've turned on clipboard history here, I can now press the Windows key uh, plus the letter V as opposed to Control V. And look what happens now. When I click uh, Windows key V, I get uh, the graphic, which you can't see, but trust me, the graphic is there, the number two, and I get uh, anything else that I've copied. So let me just do this again. So I'll paste in uh, the plane. There you go. So clipboard history is our first thing. Our second item is uh, related to this, which is the new snipping tool. So the old snipping tool worked fine. Uh, we used it quite a lot. The biggest problem with it, well, there were a couple, but the, the biggest problem with it was that it does not allow you to run more than one at a time, which is a bit annoying if you've got to copy six or seven things that you want to screen grab. So let's just show you how to do that. So now uh, the new tool is called Snip and Sketch, and it has a few advantages. So let's go into here and I'll select New. And I will take, uh, let's just take the front of this plane and I'll go off just to make the point that it's, you know, I'll take some of this uh, cell, uh, some of these cells. And there it is. Now I can go into uh, the highlighter and I can uh, mark it up, as you can see here. I can also, though, uh, start another one, which is great. So I've got two of them running. So I'll just move this one out of the way and I'll click new here. And I will grab that text and the back part of the plane just to prove the point. There it is. Now, uh, I can, again, I can mark it up, as we've said, with, you know, various different things. Uh, I can save it. I can copy it. Again, if I want to put it into the clipboard, I can also print it and I can um, share it with people here. But the big news is that I can get two or three or four or five of these all working at the same time. A little feature that was available in the old snipping tool that's still available that some people don't seem to know about is uh, under new, you can click snip in three seconds or snip in 10 seconds. And that will give you a three second or 10 second delay to get the window open that you want to have open. Windows timeline. So a uh, Windows timeline is this little guy down here that almost nobody uses. Uh, it's the task view. Uh, so when you click on it, you think, okay, well, that's going to show me uh, my uh, items that are running. But look, I can also scroll back and go through my history and I can see what else I was uh, I, working on. I can even drill in. So November 9th apparently was a busy day. I'm going to click see all 20 activities. And you can see these are the things that I was uh, working on. Apparently, this is when I was trying to sell my IKEA Sorrento. <laughs> um, I can also go to the top right here and click search. So I could search for, um, oh, let's just do a search. Well, let's go back and reset it. So I will go back to see only the top activities. And that takes me back to the, to the base here. And I can go into here and say, I don't know where that is. I just remember it had to do with the Kia. And look, there it is. I can search through and you can see it's November 9th on the right. That's all the time I was working on it. I could look at uh, Microsoft and I can see all of the different things that I had going here. And look, I can scroll down and see different dates. So you get the idea that uh, the, uh, the timeline, which is again, this little uh, movie uh, clip guy right here, actually pretty handy. Number four, predictive text. So I'm just gonna type, this is a good, and see that text popping up? Isn't that handy? Um, it's great for people with English as a second language. Uh, it's also good if you're, you know, stuck for words or how do you turn that on because it's off by default. Well, just click uh, in here and, and type predictive text and you'll see show text as I type. So there we go. And I already have it turned on here. That is this setting right here on the hardware keyboard. 
Uh, I can turn it on or off. I want it on. I do not like autocorrect. I like auto suggest. I do not like autocorrect. So um, anyway, that's where that is. Next setting is dark mode. Uh, so dark mode just makes, for me, it just makes everything easier. So um, I, I just find the, the white uh, backgrounds to be very bright. Uh, dark mode's quite the rage these days in IT. Um, I, th I think it's a bit of a fad. Uh, well, more than a bit of a fad. But for me, I actually really like it. I wouldn't pay a dime extra for it, but I'm glad it's there. So if you don't know what that is, let me just show you. So go down here and just type in dark mode. Mode, there we are. And you'll see, turn on dark mode for apps. So I'm gonna click on that. And that will take me here and I can say, you know what? I want everything to be dark. And it's just so much easier to see. So you'll see this, the start button is, is dark. Most of the apps will change to be, uh, to be dark. Not everything, but most things. It's just better. I'm going to change it back to be light just for the rest of this uh, video so that uh, you don't see anything that, you know, surprises you. Uh, but as soon as this video is done, I'm going to change it back to dark. Calculations in the search bar. So this little, uh, this little Cortana bar down here is actually pretty handy. So uh, I can do things like 10 times 88 divided by 99. And then I can do things that are even more sophisticated. Like I can say, you know, uh, plus uh, the square root of 88. And that's pretty neat. Now I can go in here and I can, you know, I can keep typing things in here, but uh, uh, I don't have to. <laughs> um, anyway, another thing you can do with the Cortana bar, which is our next item, is do quick lookups. So if I want the, the temperature, I don't even type the whole word, temp in London, England, right? So I'll just put London. Will I get it? It did, there you go, London, England. Now, uh, let's see if I can do London, Ontario. And I can, isn't that great? Uh, I can also do things like, uh, you know, time in uh, London. Uh, let's do London, Ontario. <laughs> there we go. You can do any sort of basic questions uh, in here and it will just pop up quick responses. So you can do, um, you know, uh, Trump news. Let's, there we go. How's that? Right. So that's the latest uh, thing on the Trump stuff that's going on. Next item is pin codes. So when you log into your machine, you may uh, use your Windows password which is probably a Microsoft account password. And that's just fine, it's a really good idea. However, uh, if you have to type that password all the time and someone is tracking your keystrokes, that password will then be leached out to the internet. You can imagine if somebody has your Microsoft account password, they can sign in to your mail, they can do, they can do lots of things. So what we wanna do is avoid using passwords locally as much as possible. How do you do that? Well. Uh, Microsoft has a lovely little uh, option called pins, um, among ma many other things. And it's in the Windows Hello camp. And if you don't know what that is, let me just show it to you. And I'll explain why pins are better than passwords. So let's click start. And you click on your picture, uh, right click and select change account settings. There's lots of ways to get to it, but that's the easiest way. Then go to sign in options. And in here, you'll see in my case, I've got uh, I have actually, I actually use a camera to sign in. It just looks at my face and I'm on my way. I don't have a fingerprint reader, but the pin is really great. Everybody, everything supports a pin. So click on pin. Now, uh, I can't actually show you uh, my setting up a pin because I'm running the next version of Windows and they've removed the ability to even get rid of it. They really, really want you to use pins in the future. So uh, if you have not already set one up, go to pin, uh, click on it, set it up, and all it will do is ask you for a four to 10 digit number. And you'll ask yourself, well, how could it possibly be more secure than a password? Well, it turns out that it is. Um, and the reason is a pin is locked to the PC. So it is not locked to your account. And you, well, that's a bit confusing. What does that mean? Well, it will only function while you were sitting down at that machine. So if you were to sign in on a different machine using the same account, your password would work, right? Your Microsoft account would work, but your pin would not. The pin is locked to that machine. So if you were to remote in, it wouldn't work. If you were to go to portal.office.com to sort of try to uh, uh, get into your email through Office 365, it wouldn't work. It only works when you're sitting there, which means if some jerk hacker happens to get your PIN number, it'll do them no good at all unless they're physically in front of your computer. And if they're physically in front of your computer, boy, you have big problems. Now, one thing to note is that uh, ha having a PIN in no way precludes you from doing all of the other types of sign-in. So you can still use your password if you want. You can use a fingerprint. You can do whatever else you'd like. It's just an option and we highly recommend you set it up. Next thing is store apps. This is something that's really heavily overlooked. So if you click start and go to the store, um, there's a lot of junk in the store. Well, it's got a lot of junk. There's just a lot of games and stuff in the store. 
Uh, but there are also useful, th well, I think useful things like Netflix. Uh, so yes, you can just go to netflix.com and be on your way. But uh, the problem with netflix.com, for instance, is if you have a laptop, you can't download anything. Uh, so if you're traveling, it's not very useful. So uh, there are actually quite a lot of useful apps in the App Store. I'm not going to spend your time on this. It's just the App Store uh, in Microsoft, so Windows 10 is underused. Uh, but there's just so much stuff in it. Uh, you really should take a look through it. Start menu. So let's go to the start menu. Uh, when you click start, you'll notice on the left here, there are documents and pictures by default. I hate that. I never use these folders. I do other things. So I want to change those. So how do you change this? This is called a rail. How do you change that rail? Well, it's pretty easy. Right click on settings and select personalize this list. I like to have uh, uh, File Explorer on. File Explorer is just your typical Windows Explorer. And I'll show you that in a second. Uh, I don't want to see documents and I don't want to see pictures. I do want to see downloads. So now when I click start, you'll see I've got File Explorer, which just shows me my uh, local uh, drive. And uh, also I see downloads, which has all of my downloads, which is awesome. Now you can turn on as much of this, as, as many of these as you want. Uh, but I don't want those. I want these off. So I'm going to turn those off. Emoji keyboard. Yes, so much fun. So the emoji keyboard is actually pretty useful. So let's go and it doesn't make a difference. Let's go into Excel. It could be Word, could be anything, could be Microsoft Teams, could be a browser. It doesn't make any difference. And what you uh, need to get the emoji keyboard up uh, is, to, is to press the Windows key plus the dot. And I'm going to show that to you in just a second here. So let's just type a sentence. Let's go with I like cheese. Okay. And um, then I decided, eh, you know, I really want to, I really want to put an icon here instead of uh, just using text. So I'm going to press Windows plus the period, and there we go. Uh, I can select many, many different icons here. Right? These different emojis, they call them emojis. These are really just icons, uh, but there are lots here for you to for you to choose from. Uh, I'm going to choose the uh, film icon just for fun. So there we go. And there it is, it's in there and uh, I can just keep typing now. And our last item is the blue light. Um, it's actually called night light in Windows 10, but what it relates to is turning off or downgrading the amount of blue uh, light that's coming through the screen. I can't show you this in the recording because the recording won't show it, but uh, you can try it on your own computer and you'll see that the change is quite dramatic. So what you wanna do is go to the bottom right, click on the notification area, the icon there, and click on nightlight. And what nightlight will do is it will take a lot of the blue out of the screen. And apparently this is really good for people that have frequent headaches. This is also uh, uh, something that uh, will help you uh, at night. So if you are the kind of person that works late at night, uh, you may want to turn uh, the nightlight on. And as a uh, result, what you will have is uh, an easier time getting to sleep. At least that's the theory. Uh, you can also right click on this and go to settings. And in settings, you can see nightlight is now turned on here and I can click nightlight settings and I have mine set to uh, turn on and off by the, uh, uh, the sunrise and uh, sunset. And that's it. If you have any questions, please get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thank you. Bye-bye.